Silencia for cats and Labrella for dogs. I made a video in the past about Labrella and we may repeat some of that here, but there's also other information here. And I didn't mention in that past video about Silencia for cats, which is the same thing. So you can see in the two names here, Labrella ends in the vet mab and the Silencia ends with vet mab. So they're, they're the same class of drugs, very, they're the same thing for all intents and purposes. So let's talk about why they are the wrong choice and why your vet is making this wrong choice. First of all, these drugs are marketed for true bone-on-bone -bone pain arthritis. And they may actually be helpful in isolated incidents because they deaden the nerves that carry the pain signal. So if you have bone-on-bone -bone pain and you deaden the nerves that carry the pain signal and your brain doesn't know that you have bone-on-bone -bone pain, you'll go ahead and use that joint and walk around and it can be helpful. But that's usually in an isolated laboratory test situation. That's not often real world. These drugs, the name VETMAB at the end of it, what that is, is that's an antibody against nerve growth factor. So this drug blocks or targets or inhibits or kills nerve growth factor. Not the actual nerve, but nerve growth factor. This is important because nerve cells are dying thousands or hundreds of thousands every millisecond and thousands or hundred thousands of new ones are being born every millisecond. So your nerves, just like hair cells and skin cells and intestinal cells and everything else, they're constantly dying and constantly being replaced by new ones. So you always have the same amount. So this drug's not killing the nerves, but it's stopping the new nerve cells from replacing the ones that die, which effectively is going to kill the nerves. And it's, it's all nerves, it's any nerves, not just the ones that carry pain signals, it's the nerves to every organ in your body, everything. So it can affect anything, it can cause any negative side effect. These negative side effects are usually in whatever part of the body is the weakest for your, your pet, for your dog or cat. The, if, you, if the heart is kind of weaker than the rest of the organs, then this drug might cause a significant heart problem. You know, or kidneys, or cognitive dementia type stuff. If your pet's already experienced some of that, and we kind of weaken the nerves further by not allowing the nerves to regrow and repair, then those issues are going to get worse. And that's kind of how we explain a lot of the side effects that we're seeing discussed in the social media groups about these drugs. People really don't like these drugs because of all the negative side effects. And then of course the big one that, that I see is if your dog already has weak rear legs and back, this is just going to make those things weaker to where their, their really poor mobility is going to get even worse on these drugs often. So that's what I usually see. And that's what I think a lot of vets usually see but don't realize it. We usually see weak nerves and muscles, which are a self-perpetuating cycle. If the muscles are weak, the nerves get weak. If the nerves are weak, the muscles get weak. That's usually what's causing the lameness. And that's usually due to something in the diet, you know, or inflammation from the diet or inflammation from other things in the world we live in, or a mineral imbalance or a fat and phospholipid imbalance. The fats and phospholipids are what coat the nerve and insulate them like insulation on a wire that makes them work better. Dehydration from the dry dog food or inactivity from being a couch potato and the pet owner, you, usually assumes that this weakness or lack of mobility or lameness is arthritis or specifically OA pain arthritis, which is what the drug is labeled for. So OA is osteo for bone, the A is arthro for joint, and then itis on the end means inflammation. Itis on the end of any word is inflammation, conjunctivitis, otitis, um, dermatitis, you know, anything with itis is inflammation, including arthritis. So this drug is targeted for bone on bone pain, which is osteoarthritis. Well, a lot of animals will have the weakness from the other things I described just a minute ago, but they also sometimes will have a true arthritis in their joints. Inflammation of the ligaments and tendons or of the cartilage or of the joint fluid or some inflammatory response from something in the environment that's not true osteoarthritis, but some other arthritis. So you need to know all these things before you use this drug. Now, here's how the decision usually goes down for you to go to the vet and get Labrella for your dog or Silencia for your cat. So you go to the vet complaining of arthritis or osteoarthritis. Whenever the vet hears the word arthritis, their brain automatically goes to the OA, the bone osteoarthritis. We don't often think about the other causes of arthritis. It's just the way Western medicine is taught. When we hear the word arthritis, we think osteoarthritis, even though it could be something else. So your vet, they're, they're super busy, they're overbooked, they're underpaid, they're underappreciated. I don't care how much your vet's making, most of them, some of them may be making too much, but most of them, even if they're making good money, 
they're working their butt off and they have a lot of stress and pressure to save your pet's lives, to save dogs with seizures, to take, save dogs with heart failure, to save dogs with kidney failure, to do surgeries, to help your dog walk better when you come in looking for a labrella or your cat for silencia. They're on a lot of pressure and they're underappreciated. So they're on a lot of stress. And modern Western medicine or the modern industrial society we live in doesn't promote or publicize the negative effects of the inflammation and the degeneration caused by our food and our lifestyle and forever chemicals and electromagnetic radiation. So your vet doesn't even realize that something like acupuncture or chiropractic or detoxification or biologically appropriate nutrition might help your pet. And Big Pharma relies on them not knowing that. Big Pharma is part of the, is the big people pushing for modern medicine and veterinarians to not know about acupuncture and chiropractic and that real biologically appropriate food solves so many problems. So also, your vet's had the Zoetis, the manufacturer of these drugs, which is you know, a portion of Big Pharma, the sales reps are in there telling them that Silencia for cats and Labrella for dogs are just wonder drugs, and they're completely safe. And just like they told the medical doctors about Oxycontin in the 90s, and like fentanyl, and look at the spelling of this word, fentanyl, it's not fentanyl. So they only show the, the vets or the doctors new studies and charts that are out of context and intentionally misleading, like the Oxycontin absorption chart that's portrayed in the, uh, the miniseries Dope Sick. That's exactly what they do for all these drugs. That's what Big Pharma does. So the Zoetis Big Pharma sales rep, they're not only feeding your vet misinformation about these drugs, they're also pushing it hard on the vet assistants and the support staff. So they're offering them pizza parties and Chick-fil-A lunches and spa days and all sorts of stuff to whichever vet assistant in the practice or the clinic sells the most or recommends the most of these products. And then they get all the clinics in town. If there's a dozen vet clinics near town, they've got your vet clinic group competing against those groups. Oh, see if you can sell more than this other clinic. It's all sales, sales, sales. And that's unfortunate because your veterinarian and your vet assistant, they took these jobs because they truly want to help the animals. They didn't take these jobs to push drugs. They took these jobs to help. But Big Pharma trains the sales reps to come around and push these things and you're going to get gifts and you're going to get money and you're going to get all these things. So your vet and your vet assistant is already being propagandized when you come in there saying, oh, I think my dog has arthritis and they're busy and they're running behind and they've heard this drug's a wonder drug. So your vet's ready to give the injection. The other thing is people still go to the vet just saying, doc, give it a shot. Give the dog, give the cat a shot, make him better, give him a shot. I don't have money for blood work and x-rays. I don't want full thought stuff. Just give him a shot, make him better. And 50 and 60 years ago, when the old school vets who mentored people like me were, were younger than me, you know, there weren't as many toxins in the environment. A lot of the dogs and cats were still eating real food and hunting. They didn't get as many vaccines. They didn't get as much heartworm and flea tick chemical. The world we live in didn't have as much forever chemical contamination and electromagnetic fields. So a lot of times those dogs have a little infection and a shot of antibiotics or a shot of steroids would make them better. Well, people still come in asking for that or in that mentality. And the world we live in is so toxic and complicated that you can't just give them a shot and make it better. You gotta do blood work and x-rays and spend a lot of time talking about what else is going on in your dog or cat's world or the property you live on for what's making this animal sick. And the system's set up to where the vets don't have time for that. They're too busy. There's a dog in the next room having seizures or getting euthanized or having trouble waking up from anesthesia from the dental cleaning. They don't have the time to spend with, with you that they want. It's not their fault. The practice owner wants to see more revenue and the receptionists really want to help your pet. So they just, if you call and have a problem, they say, oh, we'll fill it in. The vet will find a way to do it. And they don't realize how much pressure they're putting on the vets and the vets don't have time. So you say your dog's got osteoarthritis. The Zoetis sales rep just told them about this great drug. So they give you the injection, Labrella for dogs and Silencia for cats. It weakens and deadens the nerves, which is usually what the problem is. It's not usually arthritis. It makes them worse or it shuts them down or they die from it. And lastly, if it truly is osteoarthritis, you're going to see that on x-rays. So you need to take x-rays. Well, the vet may not have time to take the x-rays or you may not want to pay for the x-rays. So they give in and do it. And then one last thing about x-rays, x-rays are tricky. If you got an old dog or cat, it's that stiff and sore with arthritis. A lot of times because the vet clinics are so busy and stressed and hurried and running behind schedule, They'll take your old dog or cat who can barely extend their joints and barely move and they'll lay them on the x-ray table and they'll stretch them out fully because that's how you get proper textbook 
x-rays. Well, if they've got all this arthritis and bone, and bone stuff and you hold them down their side and stretch them out further, you might make their arthritis way worse. They may not walk again after that. So that's because we're too hard on the animals at that clinic because it's too busy, it's too stressed. But that doesn't take the responsibility off of you that if your vet recommends x-rays, you might need to pay for the x-rays to see if this drug is the right thing. So if it's not, you're gonna make them worse by giving them these drugs. And as I alluded to earlier, chiropractic acupuncture, biologically appropriate nutrition, it's got all the right minerals and fats and hydration in it. That's what usually fixes these animals. That's what you need to be looking for. Thanks. If you found the information in this video useful or valuable or beneficial, then click the like button, which will tell the social media algorithms to show this video to more people who may also benefit from it. If you'd like to see more videos about a variety of veterinary health topics on my channels, you can subscribe to my Holistic Perspectives channel on YouTube, or you can follow my Veterinary Medicine 101 channel on Rumble. And if you'd like a consultation about your pet's health and wellness or current ailments or chronic disease or about the care your pet's receiving from your local regular vet, anything about veterinary medicine, whether it's holistic or not, visit my website, drmattparker.com, to learn more about how to schedule a phone consultation. Thanks.